Every summer, it seems like we think we're gonna catch a break from COVID and it never happens. And scientists are starting to wonder if maybe the summer COVID wave is gonna be a thing into the future in 2024. Hi, I'm Hilary Brick. I'm a health correspondent at Insider. Right now, there's two variants that we're gonna talk about. One is Eris, which is the most common, and the other one is BA.2.86. The Eris variant is named after the Greek goddess of chaos, which is appropriate, and Eris was first discovered in China in February. That doesn't mean that the virus originated in China, but rather they were the first ones to pick it up. In May, it was responsible for less than 1% of infections. In June, it was 5%, July 15, and August, almost a quarter of infections, 24%. So basically, it's taking over, it's more infectious, and that's why a lot of people are getting COVID right now. So the symptoms of the Aris variant are nothing we haven't seen before. It's the sore throat, the runny nose, the congestion. If you're feeling sick, it's a good idea to get tested and take it easy. Incubation period is always a tricky question because it can vary a little bit from person to person, but what scientists have been noticing over time is that new COVID variants have a shorter incubation period. So whereas it maybe in the past used to take five or even seven days to test positive, people are now testing positive sometimes in just two days. So it is getting shorter. Our hospitalization rates have been going up. It's nothing like it was in 2020 or even 2021, but hospitalization rates and death rates have been going up just a little bit. Right now, the World Health Organization is calling ARIS a variant of interest. Basically, what that means is that the WHO has noticed these variants are taking over, it's causing more infections, and more people are getting sick. Another variant that people and scientists in particular are starting to talk about is BA.2.86. And this variant seems to have a large number of mutations on the spike protein. Scientists think that it probably incubated somewhere in a person who was immunocompromised, so it had a long time to mutate and get a lot of weird mutations on it that we haven't seen before. So they're concerned about that because while we don't know yet what it means, it could mean it's more contagious or it's more able to evade our defenses that we've already built up the immunity we already have. It's hard to say how fast this variant is spreading. It's been sequenced in several different countries, which suggests that it is quite widespread, but there's only been two sequences completed in the US, and it's still pretty early days for figuring out what this virus is capable of. For now, the World Health Organization is calling BA.2.86 a variant under monitoring, which is even a lower tier than a variant of interest like ARIS. So they're watching it, but they're not sure exactly if it's going to do anything notable yet. As far as we know, COVID tests still work. That being said, we still have a lot to learn about this new variant, BA.2.86, and there's always room for discrepancies from person to person. Some people don't test positive, and if you test too early or too late, that can change the outcome of your test. They still work, but they might not work every day, every time for every person. Both Pfizer and Moderna are working on updated boosters for the fall, and those should be ready by mid-September. So there's a good chance that those vaccines will work better against what's circulating now, similar to the way that the flu vaccine is remodeled every year to coincide with the flu strains that are circulating. So it looks like it's gonna be another fall of the double jab COVID flu vaccine. But it's also important to remember that unlike three years ago, 97% of us now have some immunity to COVID. We're in a better position to fight against the virus than we used to be. I don't think the emergence of these new COVID variants is gonna impact travel too much. Just the other day, we had China lifting its testing requirement for entering that country, and most other countries have lifted their testing requirements as well. So travel is gonna continue as long as COVID doesn't do anything crazy. These days, the answer to whether or not you should wear a mask really depends. It depends on you, it depends on the situation, it depends on what the virus is doing. If you have a big event coming up and you know you're gonna be in a crowded space with bad ventilation, 
a concert, a train, whatever it might be. Maybe you decide to wear a mask because you know you don't want to get sick, you know, even without COVID, with the flu or with another virus. There's definitely a possibility for more infections in the fall as people go back to school and everybody comes indoors, but scientists are starting to wonder if COVID waves will be a repeat phenomenon every summer the way that flu waves are a repeat phenomenon every winter.